Hey y'all, Coach in the Fire, you got Stacey and Chris with me. Hey y'all. Shalom. And in today's video, we're talking about the Celestial Clock Calendar Revision 15.1. Yeah. Seems like we got some changes that are being made. So this calendar doesn't only tell you the date, but it tells you how to find the date also. Absolutely, and that's one of the things that Stacy contributed. That's why we're bringing her in on this introduction because input based on the questions that she asked, you can use this diagram or compass as some people call it to actually determine what time of the day you're in, what day of the month you're in, even what part of the year you're in simply by knowing the position of the sun, the moon, and the stars. So it's actually giving you um, a lot more information and if I'm asking the question it's because I need for it to be easier to read so it's easier to read also? Absolutely because if you remember we did a little short video where we took the neighbor's kids out in the field, your little cousins, right. and we gave you, remember that? You want to tell them how that went? Yeah, I believe they are the age of um, eight and nine or ten, and they were successfully able to um, mark the calendar um, correctly. Yeah, just using the moon. Have, the moon happened to be out that day. Right. And so they was able to draw a picture. Using the moon and the sun to tell what day and what day of the month they were on. As a matter of fact, Christian, and you could take the time right quick to show them how they can use data from like one of the online sources to do just that. You know, using the percentage of the moon, the, the, um, the um, sun data, and even where we're at in the constellations to demonstrate how you can use this particular piece of paper to, like I said, tell the time of your year, son day, month, and hour. Right. That's good. Where are you going? Timeanddate.com or data services? Uh, data services. Let's look at the report for one day and see if that would give us all we need. Okay. So here we are with the complete sun and moon data for one day. That's today in our area roundabout. And it's showing times for sunrise, sunset, and also the percentage of the moon. All right, so I can use this information to see where we're at on the celestial clock calendar. Because, of course, this is man's Gregorian calendar, right? Right. And so we can start with the sunrise and sunset to find out what part of the year we're in. And that's the part we added based on Stacy's input. Right. All right, so let's see if it'll work for us. So it's showing a rise time of 6.42 and a set time of 7.20. All right, Stacey, you can help us remember that. 6.42 and 7.20. Okay. Let's see what the closest match of those two is on the celestial clock calendar. And it may be important to use the exact data that we use to make up this clock calendar. Not necessarily our data, but what data did we use for Rev 15.1, Chris? The location that we took this data from it sets in about the Gulf of Mexico. Right, because what we were doing was trying to make it an exact equal day and equal night, right? Right. And it just so happens that it comes up in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. Where the Keys of Enoch talks about that Altea America. Yeah, what the other people call Atlantis. Yeah, that's maybe it's supposed to be the place where the new pyramids are supposed to be built. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that they all line up at that spot. But anyway. I was just thinking how, um, how it's so close to us that it's just a hop and a skip away from us. <laughs> yeah, we can go down there and go fishing. Yeah. <laughs> Praise our Father in heaven. All right, now the easiest way to do it will be to look for the closest match because your sunset and sunrise time in your area won't match that in Altea, America or the Gulf of Mexico, unless, of course, you live down there. So, here 
like Christian says, we have 642 for sunrise. Right. So that would mean we're no farther than February 5th. And then as far as the sunset, it was 521. So that means we're no earlier than January 22nd. So that gives us about a three week range. Well, we know that we're in winter and that's what we're looking for. Right. Keep going around. Okay, because when you look around the compass, which shows you the sunset time for the entire year, you see that there's not another time in the year when you have a sunset around the time of 644. Right. And that's important to understand because when you come back to the fall, you see that you will get another 521. Right. On or about October the 16th-ish. But you see that sunrise is 555 then. Yeah. So the only time you get both of them around that time is during... The winter season. Yeah. And so that's how Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and anybody would have determined the time simply by using the sunset and the sunrise times. Mm -hmm. They just go out there and look at it. See, okay. Take that, I guess. What kind of watch would they have had back then? Sundial. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can see that information on here, down there where you see that big 364th day. Of course, that's March the 20th when we have equal days, equal nights. Right. And that's, of course, when the year starts. And what do you think about that, Stan? Mm -hmm. See, that was the question you asked. How can you determine the year without a... Without a movement, a doubled up movement. Right. But that ain't it. What about using that same data to determine what time of the month we're in? Well, if we look back at it, it says at the bottom that we have a waning gibbous with 86%. Okay, well, let's look back at it. Because on there, you see that there's two times we can find 86%, right? Yes, that's around here. So that would be when a time when it's waxing gibbous. Right. And then it would be again right here just after where the 84% is at. So it's saying that it's waning gibbous there. Right. So what day of the month are we in? Day, or should I say what day of the month are we in? So with a waning gibbous moon, that puts us at this day. And that's 15, 16, 17, the 18th day of the month. What do you mean? Back, back, um, some people are not following me on that. And a lot of people, this will be their first video that they've seen using this type of chart. So like on the Naval Observatory, it said that we have waning gibbous of 86%. So you start here at 0% with the first day being here. And then you go all the way around to here you have 86, but that's at the waning gibbous. So you keep going around the clock to up here where you have 86% again. And these marks, each mark is for a day of the month. And as the moon lights up, the light will fill in these lights, will fill in these cells going all the way around. So each one of those cells represents a day. Right. So what you're saying is that we can start back on the first day or the 30th day right there at about three o'clock position. And then each day we can count the percentage until we get around to an 86% waning crescent moon. Right. And know that we're on or about the 18th day of the month. Right. Which is right after the time appointed or the full moon. Right. And Stacy, if you remember, that's how we use this printout to determine the day of the month. Right. But if we didn't have any data from a place like the U.S. Naval Observatory, we could simply go look at the moon and draw it like those eight-year-olds did that day. Yeah, like the kids did out in the field. And still get the same information as far as what day we're in. And they can use the same information as far as the sunrise and sunset time to determine the year that we're in. Yeah, and that's important because of the times that we're living in, the sun and moon data might not always be um, available for us. Right, and then you could use the clock and vice versa. Right. Mm -hmm. You can find out what day you're on by looking at your watch. 
and then use this data sheet to say, okay, well, even though there may be clouds, the moon should be right there in that position. Right. Even helping you to do an observation because you know where to look. Yeah. 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 That's one of the uh, most important reasons. Like, like, for instance, here, if we look at what the time of the day, Chris, how do you use this to determine the time of the day? And then we can understand how this sheet can also be used to tell us the position of the sun if we just knew what time of day it was like for instance right now according to your computer is 2 16 where is the sun at in the sky that would mean that the sun is about right here in the sky about 120 degree 120 325 degrees or about 37 degrees from the median which, like you said, Stacy, just makes it just really easy mm -hmm. you, you, because you could go vice versa. If you knew where the sun was in the sky, you can know what time it is. Right. And if you know what time it is, you can know where the sun is at in the sky. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the world, I'm sure, will appreciate you adding or helping us to understand that so we can add that to the clock. And you can print this out for your own use at coachingthefight.shop. Now, what is this telling us? So the second hand is telling us that it was about 1.45 when this picture was taken. Right, because the second hand is what tells us the time of day. Right. Not necessarily the minute hand and the hour hand. What do they tell us? Well, the minute hand is telling us that it is the 18th day of the month. So just like we just looked at using the information from online, it matches up with the picture that you took today. Right. Okay. And then the hour hand is telling us that we are in early winter. Okay, so how far off were we using the sunset? Looks like we were about a week and a half off. And the reason why is because of the representation of the moon. Right. It's not the sun, the sunset times that determine the time of the month. But you have to have the combination of the sun and the moon right. to determine what, what time of the month you're in. And then we add the information from the stars to tell us what time of the year we're in. And of course, we see that down there with the representation from this constellations like the water bearer, the fish. The goat underneath the hour hand. So now we've talked about the hour, we talked about the day, and we talked about the month. What about all of the information that's contained in the middle part? Well, how about we just show you where we're at in time and then we can illustrate each one of those sections and what they mean. Okay. The pentagram is actually talking about years now. Whereas we went from hours to days to months. Now you see that we're actually looking at years. Right. The earliest year being this year, 2024. And if we look close, it says 2024 AD. 5997 AM. That's talking about Anu Monday. And if we go all the way around, we'll see that 2028 AD is actually 6001 Anu Monday. Okay. Which is the year in which we expect the new heaven, the new earth, the kingdom of heaven, the whole big. Everything we've been waiting for this whole time. And remember, you guys, you can see it over at coachingafight.shop. We're going to be expanding the things that are on coachingafight.shop, not just clocks, but mom will be bringing some beads and tassels that you'll be able to purchase there, bookmarks, sundials. Oh, the stuff like you had on the other store, uh, the, the bomb, bomb and, and the blend. blend. Yeah, and you know, I think that um, every organization can't. Um, even church, I would dare say, that is serious about keeping the father's time and um, calendar correctly would definitely look into um, having one of these celestial clocks. I think it's, it's very important. Absolutely. All right, y'all. Thanks for your time. And Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.